What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Sashi. Welcome back, all things Japanese. I wanted to share with you guys five or six reasons why I love being a software engineer. As some of you guys know, uh, I am a Japanese born Japanese who moved to Canada for university and uh, majored in computer science. And after graduating from uh, getting a Bachelor of Computer Science at the top of one of the top Canadian universities, I got a software engineering or software developer job and I've been working as a software developer for two years now. But when I was in school, I did two co-ops, uh, two paid internships. Uh, one at Blackberry in Waterloo in Canada, Ontario, and the other one in Microsoft headquarters in Redmond, Seattle, Washington. And before that, uh, I was studying uh, basically world history in Japanese high school and I knew nothing about coding or programming or operating system or whatnot. So let's get on to the uh, uh, topic of this uh, video. Six reasons why or five reasons why I love being a software, en software engineer. First one is about the logical intelligence that I can get or learn from the uh, from uh, from becoming a software engineer. So when you are school in school studying about computer science, you learn a lot about algorithm, uh, data structures, or logic. You know, kind of like in a math equation. Like if this do that, else if do this, if, else if do that. Like you know, like while you know meeting this condition, do this and do that. So you get to you get to used to uh, thinking like in in a quite logical manner because programming is quite a bit about you know first you know coming up is good logic, you know programming logic and then other part is kind of syntactical and you know, data structure re uh, related kind of efficiency and effectiveness. So you get to become quite good at thinking something systematically and logically. So when I say systematic way, it's kind of like you know having an abstract view of things like life, or could be about achieving something, or could be about even about dating, or even about you know dieting and fitness. How I see those stuff right now, it's all abstract, and then I can think in like a long-term, multi-dimensional way. So you know it's kind of like you know having a good high-level overview, architectural view of life or about achieving something. And to do that, it's kind of like writing an essay. You have a thesis statement, you have an intro, body, and a conclusion, but in multi-dimensional way with a time frame. I know it's a lot of information already, but this is how I think. So when I when it comes to like you know, uh, uh, let's say like I want to lose 10 pounds and then increase my uh, uh, muscle mass, you know, or you know, you know, decrease my body fat to like you know 10 percent. How I think about it, it's first of all long term plan, like you know, at least one to three years, and then at least have that my in my mind, and I you know think backward, you know backward, and then and then basically connecting dots, and then what can I do in six months? What can I do in three months? One month, the time frame, and then after that, I need to plan, kind of like you know, it's that that was a horizontal planning, strategic plan, right? And next one is kind of vertical one in my mental model. So I I already mentioned about few words in mental model, vertical, horizontal. Those are all like in you know, a kind of uh, concepts that you learn you get you need to be used to you need to get used to in computer science because it's all about modeling mental modeling uh, abstraction abstraction is the computer science so you know top priority thing so it's kind of like a 2080 rules I don't know if you've heard about it but there's a 2080 rules apply pretty much applying to everything and you know pretty much 20% of work produces like 80% profit or results so it's kind of the same way if I want to boost my body fat and then increase my muscle mass I need to think about horizontal uh, time frame as well as vertical priorities so I would come up with to-do list and then uh, order them based on priorities which one is going to produce 80% of results and based on that I'll pick top three to five top priorities and focus on that and then ignore the rest because if you're spending you know 
too much time on something that produces only like 10% of the total results, maybe you're wasting time. So that's kind of like you know 2080 rules that I that I've been applying to every aspect in my life. Could be fitness, could be about engineering, uh, it could be about you know life, financial thing as well. So you get used to this abstract, systematic, logical thinking, and then this really, you know, making my life easier. And the way of thinking, that the framework, that the way to think about it, is quite you know, it's a quite, it's quite good if you get used to it. And uh, some people, you know, probably you've heard about it, but there's a you know personality test test. Uh, uh, and then I, my personality is INTJ or INSJ, and this personality is kind of kind of rare. I, I think I think it consists of like ten percent, ten percent people, or well, less than ten percent. But basically, the three types of people based on uh, time, the way they look at time. Some people are too focused on the past in the past. Some people are too present focused, and then some people are more focused on the future. And my type is more focused on the future, like systematic, systematically thinking about what to do step by step uh, to achieve. So achieve goal-oriented kind of way of thinking. Whereas present focused people tend to be um, distracted easily by, oh, I need to Snapchat, and then Instagram, oh, Facebook, email, calendar, oh, I need to eat, oh, I need to walk my dog, and oh, or oh, Facebook feed, news feed from my friends. And that's like a present focus and a distraction. Like you know, it tends to happen more often with somebody who is quite more you know uh, emotional. You know their wavelength ups and down. And but anyway, so so that's one thing that I really love about being a software engineer. You know, it taught me how to think systematically to to achieve something in a step by step manner. Second thing is the freedom, freedom uh, that I have at the workplace. It's you know these days it's all about macro management, not micro management. So I have more autonomy in what I'm going to do this day to the more tomorrow. Uh, you know every day I can ma I can kind of manage myself, kind of like you know I can can kind of pace myself with top priorities that I need to work. And of course you know there are things that I need to work on based on business needs or from like my manager and of course I need to work on that but they don't micromanage software engineers like you know every 15 minutes they're not gonna you know check me up and doing if I'm working or if I'm working harder they are not gonna ask you know it's crazy in some Japan in Japanese companies uh, I heard in the news reading news that employees need to get permission from their boss to even go to boss room and what the fuck is that micromanagement shit but anyway so software engineers get to be quite autonomous and uh, sometimes they can design their own like you know the schedule for the day as long as they uh, you know deliver their deliverables and out outcomes you know they can design their own they'll have more freedom choice in terms of how they work they can listen to music while they're coding you know or well, they can you know multitask few tasks based on the way they operate you know so so much freedom and also sometimes you know if you're a good software engineer or depending on the nature of business or projects or company you work out software engineer can work from home sometimes maybe like you know my company some people work like half a day from in you know, home because they need to go to appointments doctor appointments and they need to uh, to pick up their kids or whatnot so they have quite a bit of freedom because all they need is, you know, of course they need to sometimes communicate in per, uh, face to face, but, you know, as long as they have a laptop, you know, as long as they have skills in the brain, they can, you know, quite a bit of work from home as long as they have an internet and a computer. So that's so much of freedom that I really enjoy. I'm not really tied down to one location, one cubicle. That's really, you know, thing that I really enjoy. Third one that I really like is that you know the attire. Um, I don't like to wear business suits if that doesn't improve my performance at all. And then software engineering companies, like IT company, you can think of those like in you know, Google, Facebook, Amazon, or Microsoft. You can think of those guys you know, wearing really casual attires, like you know, t-shirts and shorts and then maybe flip-flops. 
that's true for software engineers. If you're like a business guy in those tech companies, they need to still wear like a kind of a casual business casual like in a suit because they need to uh, see customers or even boss. Some software engineering managers wear like you know uh, collar shirts, button up, and then uh, dress shoes. But if you're just a software engineer, um, not really facing customers, you get to wear anything really casual, and then you can express yourself. And even during the interview, many big companies explicitly say in email dress casually it is interview is not about impressing by dressing up like Microsoft or Google they really say that they really emphasize that they don't care about how much you dress up they care so much about here how you think and then their logical intelligence so that's really you know I really appreciate that because like coming from Japan where so many people wear business suits and then and they just they they stay at the office just because their boss is still in our office so their whole like you know objective and intention at work is not to produce anything it is to kind of satisfy their own boss regardless of they are performing good or not and that i'm so tired and i'm so sick of it and then so some most many like old looking old guys dudes wearing business suits and they're looking like they're doing some big deal stuff but in all honesty and actuality most of them are not even producing much results they just look like they're business looking but they're not smart they're not intelligent they have no brain i, I know i'm a little bit sarcastic here but basically i don't want to you know look good to just satisfy or to just look like I'm working. I want to look as casual as possible by producing as much results. That's more impressive, right? So I get to, I, especially me, I don't want to wear uh, ties or you know, collar shirts. I like more casual style. So I really like being a software engineer because I get to wear anything. And I've, at the uh, past one, two, three, four companies in my software engineering career, nobody really told me about you know me wearing having to wear uh, you know the collar shirts or whatever so it's really good you know in fact i wore this today and came back from work today another thing that i really like about software engineer is that you know so much you know good work environment i don't say every companies every it companies offer a great workplace but many actually strive to provide great work experience. What that mean is that they could provide, let's say, catered lunch, uh, uh, unlimited uh, soft drinks in the kitchen, like vending machine, free vending machine, or free snacks, or office dog allowed, or foods bowl, or movie, or relax, uh, relax room provided, or there are so many like you know uh, perks amenities as well. The reason why so many you know IT like tech companies can do that is because with the constant lack of good software engineers, the huge demand for IT development tech development, as you can tell, Facebook, Snapchat, Uber, Airbnb, it's just growing, right? but software engineers are so low in supply and that's the reason why we get paid a lot more than most of the jobs and then we get treated quite good in relative to other jobs so we have more freedom we get you know we are kind of being spoiled but it's good because we are focused we are doing some you know hard work like you know, problem solving skills required so free food not all the companies but you know for example Facebook they have like a free cafeteria they can eat like three meals a day and then the free meals are uh, unlimited vacation at Facebook um, my company I can take four weeks vacation right now at my position so longer vacation less you know extra hours and then food drinks um, dogs events and uh, you know just work environment is awesome so you know that's what I like about being a software engineer Probably the last one about why I like being a software engineer is it is something that I something that 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 I picked up from doing a work uh, uh, self development 
then uh, in self development, personal development, uh, you know, you probably might have uh, this book, uh, uh, Seven Habits of uh, Effective People, or uh, Slight Edge, or Tony Robbins on this uh, giant within, or many other self development books. And it is all about, all like, you know, Sam Walton, it's a book, or Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, autobiography called the Toro Rico. And then you notice that in this world, only thing that is constant is change, right? And then it's quite true in fast pacing IT industry as well. And we need to adapt to change. We need to adapt to new uh, customers' demand. We need to come with new products. And then we need to be agile. So Facebook, for example, is super agile. They release new features every week, every two weeks. So IT technology is quite opposite from hardware engineering manufacturing companies. They tend to be a little bit more, more monolithic and slow and traditional. So many layers, it's slow to move. Whereas, you know, recent, not all, but recent tech companies need to adapt super fast to, to gain revenue so they become more agile. And what I'm talking about here is, you know, adapt. Adapt to change. Change is the only constant thing in this world. And being a software engineer, is a good way to be exposed to the fast-pacing world and then looking at you know new change new demands new you know features and that quite applies to life as well so as a software engineer not all the software engineers but uh, me as personally i become quite adaptable to new you know environment and stuff new technology new language features new framework like you know, for example like new like C++ 17 or uh, new C Sharp framework or Java 8 you know technology is constantly being updated and upgraded so as a software engineer once you become software engineer it's pretty much about you know you committing for lifelong learning and that's so true and that's quite opposite from like a you know, traditional uh, job like accountant or lawyer or doctor the, their knowledge is kind of like you know they kind of more routines like accountant they, they do just routine works whereas a software engineer is quite innovative not all software engineer but many software engineer work is quite innovative they need to learn they need to constantly change and improve and that's what I like about it. it's more dynamic and then it keeps my brain sharp and it keeps me going because you know you, you know you guys get excited about new technology right like iPhone X or iPhone 8 or oh Kindle Fire or or new TV or Samsung or drone or new car excited right it's innovation same software engineer it's it's kind of it's a sense of growing sense of growth uh, it's something that gets people going and then that's what I really like about software engineer Thank you guys. Um, so those are kind of brief, not quite brief, but you know things that I like about. And I don't say this is the uh, the representation of all the software engineers, but as somebody who have done uh, self development and personal development for past six years, and I've also from somebody who has uh, worked on personal fitness, like I've been to a fitness competition. Also, somebody who has adapted to new culture. This is my opinion, and uh, you know, if you find something interesting about what I said, or if you wanna, you know, adapt some of the, incorporate some of the thing that that you can, you know, take in as being a software engineer. Uh, yeah, go ahead and study computer science and software engineer. IT software is the only industry right now. It's it's kind of guaranteed to grow in the future. AI, robots, machine learning, and software is taking over human brains and hardware is going to be less important than software. Manufacturing is going to be being replaced by cheap you know, offshore companies in like China or India. And, uh, but brain, software thing, like you know, that logical or intelligent thing cannot be replaced easily. So do study if you want to have a bright future. Alright, thank you guys for watching. This is my video about why I like being a software engineer questions let me know like share subscribe until next time bye bye